Hello, Rashford fan. How are you? Hey, man, what happened on Friday Night SmackDown main event for June 28th, 2024? The show opened out with a brawl between Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and the Bloodline. There's a six-man tag made for that Money in the Bank. We don't know which three members of the Bloodline is going to be until the pay-per-view, apparently. Naked Dollars came out with our APD officers, security officials separated the two groups. Then actually kept the Bloodline... At the arena, because they were having a segment in the show, and Cody, Orton, and Owens had to be escorted out of the arena with LAPD officers and security. Uh, not before they decided to attack, uh, attack, beat up some security officers, and hit an RKO, a stunner, and a crossroads before they had to be escorted out of the arena. The open the match was Tiffany Stratton versus Candice Neray versus Jay Gajo. Winner goes into the Money in the Bank women's ladder match. Wow, Jay Gajo came out posing with her muscles on that. No reaction whatsoever for the fans. I noticed ever since she was messed up a Clash of the Castle, her and Bianca in that terrible freeway tag match for the titles, ever since then, they have been shitting all over Jay Gajo. Um, this match, she did very really good. So hopefully the fans will learn, like, hey, it was just a one-time mess up. Well, three-time mess ups now. She's messed up. But anyhow, she's getting better again. I love Candice LeRae's attire. Sexy as hell. And Tiffany Stratton's as well. Great triple fight match to start off the show. Jay Gajo clothesline both with him down. Um, running forearm shots in the corners of both with him. Um, scoop slammed one of them down. Spine busted the other one down. Um, then she uh, got started getting double teamed by Tiffany and Candice. They snap suplex her down. Double team stomps. Double team ground pound attack on her. Um, sent her outside of the ring, then they started fighting each other. Then Jay got in the ring, started cleaning the house again. Back break on Candice Neray. Um, super kick Tiffany Stratton outside of the ring to the floor. Picked up Candice, tossed her over the ropes onto Tiffany Stratton outside. Suddenly, Nia Jax came out to check on her friend Tiffany Stratton. Bianca Barra came out to even the odds for her friend Jay Gajo. There was no Indy Hartwell, I noticed. Jay Gajo Irish whip both of them in opposite corners, started doing running splashes in the corners. Well, Tiffany Stratton moved out of the way, and Jay Gajo hit the corner and knocked herself over the top rope. Andy Hartwell shows up finally, smashes her face first to the ring post, takes off. Bianca goes after her because she, she saw what happened, but it was too late to do anything. In the ring, Tiffany Stratton spun Candice Neray around, who was watching what happened, got Buster, top rope, Tiffany saw your winner. Go in the Money in the Bank, Tiffany Strat, baby. Yeah. This winner was the Money in the Bank line match. You got Ollie Valkyrie. You got Tiffany Stratton. You got Chelsea Green. Like, who, who cares about that? Um, you got Free. Win a minute so far. Eo Sky. She was added into it. So, so far, Free out four is not a bad mix. Um, then we had LA Knight, Central Escobar, the LWO Hill Team version, and Logan Paul, the United States Champion, in a triple threat Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. Logan Paul came out with a basketball friend. LA Knight had a basketball rival fan, an attendance that teamed up. It basically helped him out ringside. Santos had nobody. Poor Santos, he had nobody. Um, Santos, Logan Paul started working on LA Knight. Punches, kick to the gut, body slams, taking a turn. Being up on LA Knight, who came back, punched Fury combo on Logan Paul, Russian leg sweeped him down, power slam Santos Escobar down, jump up elbow drop on him, sent Logan Paul on Santos outside the ring, Dro running drop kick Santos to the barricade, turn around, smash Logan Paul's face off. They announced it about 12 times. Again, Logan Paul, Santos start working double team on LA Knight. Like Logan Paul, they a flapjack, and then. Alley, um, sorry, Santos Escobar delivered the running knees to the face. And then, um, Logan Paul turned around, flapjack Santos Escobar on top of Alley Knight. That pissed off Santos. Hit a nice running her Corona onto Logan Paul. Then delivered a top rope her Corona onto Alley Knight, who was getting up on the top rope to do a move. Alley Knight fought back again. Um, clean house. Went for the rolls, playing DDT. Logan Paul stopped it, and uh, Santos Escobar hit an Insigiri kick on Alley Knight. Went for a move off the top rope. Alley Knight blocked it. Back body drop off the rope, top rope. Suddenly, Logan Paul came out of the opposite top rope with a swan tie bomb on Alley Knight. 
as he was coming down with a back body drop on Santos. That was an awesome sequence right there. Suddenly, Logan Paul started going like this, and his friend that shows up in front row with the brass knuckles, handing them to the basketball player, who then handed them over to Logan Paul. Well, at this point, the other basketball player jumped over the barricade because he's friends with Valley Knight, and had a steer down shoving contest to the other one. So the referees came out to separate the two basketball players. As that was going on, Alvin Knight rolled up Logan Paul in the ring, handful of tights to steal the win to go into Money in the Bank. Yeah! Alvin Knight ain't winning Money in the Bank. That's a given. Logan Paul is going to screw him out of it to set up the United States Championship match at SummerSlam. I'm, big, I'm betting that right now. That's what's going to happen. Your main event was Nainomi versus Blair Davenport versus Indy Hartwell in the final Money in the Bank contract ladder match qualifying spot on the SmackDown brand. Great main event. All three win them. Stole the show I fought. Nainomi was impressive this week. Top rope, split leg and leg drop of both win them. Top rope cross body on both of them. Top team stereo thrust kicks on them. Cleaning house. Then um, Andy Hartwell and Blair Devil started double team and I know me. Like kicks to the guts, uh, double team clothesline, a double team suplex on her. And I know we fought back. At one point in the match, Blair Davenport sent both of them outside the ring over the ropes. Jumped off the ring apron, double stomp across the back. And I know me, Cricky ran, jumped off the still steps, double stomp to the guts on Andy Hartwell. Andy Hartwell at one point power bombed the holy hell out of Nainomi. Spine buster Blair Davenport on top of Nainomi. Pin both win them. They both kicked out. She got mad. Spine buster Nainomi as she was coming off the ropes. Suddenly, Jay Gajo comes out because she's pissed off. Andy Hartwell cost her the opening match. Attacked her. They start brawling up on the entrance ramp. Now that Nainomi to sneak back in the ring because she was knocked out from the spine buster road outside the ring. Grab a hold of Blair Davenport from behind Bubba Bomb, like team Bubba Ray Dunn used to do for the one, two, three, to qualify for Money in the Bank. There you have it for matches, folks. Every match definitely must see action on SmackDown. It's a shame there's only three matches, no. But the brawl with Cody, Orton, Owens, Bloodline, that took like half an hour, so it makes sense. Um, the show ended off with Paul Heyman not acknowledging. Solo Sokoa is his tribal chief. He said, forever Roman Reigns will be my tribal chief. So, the blind line beat up Paul Heyman. Samoan Spike. Top rope diving hit bump for Jacob Fought too. I think he was going for a frog splash and Miss Q messed up on that big time. Because even the announcers were like, oh shit. Like, I think they were expecting the frog splash a lot. Him to mess up like that. Then they deliver a sheer power bomb. Paul Heyman from the announce table. To end the show and they posed. Don't piss off Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is the type of guy you never piss off. So I'm expecting. I might see Jimmy Uso. A year ago go. Jimmy, Jay, Roman, Sammy. Reuniting. On Smackdown to fight with the bloodline. Leading into war games. That's probably the long term plan. Or maybe Paul Heyman. Will recruit. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, CM Punk. And reform kind of like a new version of the Shield or with other people. I'm hoping Paul Heyman shows up money in the bank next Saturday on the pay per view and costs the bloodline the match to get payback. Um, next week on SmackDown, three matches were announced: Jay Gajo, Bianca Belair will face Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae tag action. We also got the Street Profits versus Pretty Diddley. It's going to be happening, and finally, Austin Fury, Grace Wall, finally, finally. After winning the Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania in April, are going to be defending the titles against DIYs, John Gagal, and Tommaso Ciampa. That's going to be an awesome tag match. Um, hopefully that should be the main event on the opening match on SmackDown. Our main event, we had the Offers of Pain, took on the Creed Brothers. Nothing very exciting happened there. Like, Julius Creed crossed body off the ropes on one of them. The other guy picked him up, scoops him down. AOP offers a pain. Obviously, whipped Julius Creed in the corner. Body shots, knee to the guts. Brutus came in. Top row cross body. Knocked down both guys. And then Super Collider on him for the 1 2 3. Fast match. It was like four minutes if you're lucky. The other match on main event was awesome. It was a Kara Tozawa and LWO face team member Joaquin Wilde. 
Man, these guys are my... This match was like WCW Cruiserweight style action, folks. Wow. Um, Tozawa got planted with amazing run-in DDT from Joaquin Wall. Just spiked him on his head. Um, Tozawa hit back with an awesome, amazing shot on a wizard. And a snap running her Karana. Joaquin Wall jumped off the rope, snapped off her Karana of his own. Both guys delivered top rope drop kicks at one point on each other. Joaquin Wall had the match won, but Tozawa kicked out. Hit a series of like roundhouse kicks, spin kicks. Bicycle kicks, like I lost count of my kick strikes he was delivering to Joe King Wild. Just leveled his ass down. Then top rope swanton drop for the one, two, three. Tozal has won a match. Ever since he left Al, Al ever since he left Al for Academy, he picked up a win. Way to go, Tozawa. There you have it, folks. Let me know below who you think's gonna win the final Money in the Bank qualifying matches on Raw. You got Ivy Niles, Zoe Starks, Dakota Kai. You got Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Dragunov. I hope Dragunov wins. And like I'm saying, this Money in the Bank matches so far. Your Sky is the only one of all the contestants on this Money in the Bank ladder match has actually has won the briefcase. Everybody else has never even been in the match. Or has been in the match has never where he won it. So I'm thinking you might have a first time... Winners on both these Money in the Bank live matches. I'm hoping they do what they always used to do, which was one brand gets a briefcase, the other brand gets one. Because like these, like both brands get both briefcases, right? I don't like that. That way you got two different storylines going on on each brand. On the looks of things, the man side, SmackDown needs that Money in the Bank briefcase this year to build up a future SmackDown superstar. The Raw win them. They need that women's money in the bank briefcase because between the women's matches on Raw and the ones on SmackDown, SmackDown's on fire in the women's division. Raw, they're just like two minute matches, right? The lack of excitement now. So having that briefcase on Raw makes sense. And like I said, vice versa, the other briefcase on SmackDown. There you have, folks. Stay safe, have buddy. Too sweet. Bye.